Uh, my name is Richard Benjamins. I'm Director of Business Intelligence for Telefonica Digital and today I will be talking about big data. Listening to the, the introduction, um, big data are very important, but if you, look at the, if, if you looked at the news today and yesterday, uh, BlackBerry uh, being sold, Nokia went to Microsoft. So big data is big, but there are other things uh, out there which are uh, attracting a lot mo more attention. Um, I also saw yesterday uh, the president of Oracle. Uh, there seems to be an Oracle summit uh, somewhere. And uh, in an interview he was asked, uh, so uh, your growth figures are not as last year, uh, and aren't you afraid of those uh, smaller companies in Silicon Valley that take a lot of the big data yeah, of, your, of your potential smaller clients? And actually he didn't answer, he just said that he, they had a great team, they, they did 5 billion investments in R&D every year, and their growth was okay. So um, <coughs> the big players are a bit afraid of what's coming, and I think that's what, that's what we are talking about. All right, so big data. What can I tell about big data? Yeah? Um, this is what Gartner released uh, in August, so it's very recent. As you can see, big data is here right at the top. I predicted in 2030 it would go over. <coughs> and why? Because lots of organizations have interest in this. They all are investing something in Hadoop, doing something with a vendor, a small one, a big one. And then when they have everything in place, then they ask themselves, so, and now what? What do we do with it? How do we get the value? Yeah? Obviously, that's already happening with organizations, but on the other hand, the, the, hype, the hype is still, is still there, the interest is still there. But I think some companies are realizing that it's not only about technology. And, and if I listened also to Mark's uh, reasons of challenges of big data, one of the things that strikes me uh, is that there is nothing about the organization. Yeah? So it's not a lack of skills. Uh, it's a lack of management uh, being able to be data-driven. Yeah? It's always the hippo, the highest, highest income person's opinion, which is counting. It's not the data that tells we should do this or we should do this, or this hasn't worked, yeah? even though it came from the CIO. Now, I think understanding that as a manager, as a top manager, that you're not always right, but your data, and your data can tell you otherwise. I think that's the real challenge, why people don't uh, don't ex uh, get the, the, all the value from, from big data. A few interesting stuff. Um, what's here at the top? Predictive analytics, yeah? Predicting what are your future customers, what customers will leave. Oh, it went all the way through, it's almost there, yeah? And you can see it because there are several companies who give you out-of-the-box algorithms, out-of-the-box solutions for predictive analytics. You don't need any data scientist, yeah? You just need some data, you upload it to somewhere in the cloud, you click a button and there you go. Please contact those clients because they will leave in the following days. Then there is prescriptive analytics. Yeah? It's the nirvana of, uh, of data analytics. That's about not about what happened or what should we do or why did it happen. It is about um, how should we make it happen. Yeah? So looking at the data, say, okay, if we do this, then we can make this happen. Now, that's really where people want to be. Yeah? <coughs> so a lot of these things, uh, Content analytics, yeah, social media analytics. So I think it's still a bit hyping, yeah. So interesting curve, um, but yeah, it's still a hype. And as you can see, the big, big, big data landscape is getting more and more crowded. Yeah, it's a sign of the hype. I bet 80% of these are just regular companies who already did things and they suddenly rebranded themselves as big data, which is usually what happens in the hype. Yeah? I used to know about, I don't know, most of the, the companies in this space. I think I know about 20% now. So it's really, really full. Yeah? It's also a sign of the hype. So if you want to play something as a company in this space, as a small one or a big one, well, there's a lot of competition and you really need to deliver on your promise. Yeah? It's a hype, but still it's important. Yeah? And this shows that being data-driven really pays off. Yeah? If you look at this, is a kind of financial uh, <laughs> measure uh, that tells you how valuable companies are. Yeah? Companies who really are information companies, like the Googles, yeah? uh, TripAdvisor, they're built around data. They value most. Then there are companies who take data at their heart. Yeah? Netflix, recommendations, Amazon, the re Apple. They really look at the data, the, the data-driven they value much more than normal companies. Yeah. So this is where you have to be 
and uh, and this is the the standard yeah companies who have a business intelligence department that do something with the data but not really data driven somewhere hidden in the organization yeah? there is value but it's hard to get there yeah and we saw it also in the in, in the survey of mark if you look from it this is a gardener view on the analytics this i mentioned it briefly before so the first step you have, you get some data and you ask yourself, okay, what has happened? Why is my product not selling? Why is the churn so high, et cetera? Second thing is this, um, actually trying to find the reason why it's the case and doing something about it. Yeah? Then you want to do prediction and then even prescription. Yeah? But to get there, it's increasingly harder. Yeah? You always have to start here and then grow, uh, grow into the curve. Now what I will tell you is two examples of Telefonica Digital working in this space, which is basically what Mark said, for internal optimization of your business and external use of the data. Yeah? But before that, <coughs> um, privacy remains an issue. Yeah? I, I, I quite often give talks on, on, on big data and um, also sp always spend a lot of time on, on privacy because if you want to do something with data, uh, it, oftentimes it's personal data and if you are in the telecommunications industry of course you always want to reach the final customer um, and I was always saying that we are living on a kind of privacy time bomb yeah like the nuclear energy and you know that there are all kinds of disasters uh, in nuclear energy in the 70s there was the disaster in the three miles uh, island in the United States which killed the uh, nuclear energy so some people say, okay, something will happen in, this, in the data space that will kill the industry. It will get regulators, Europe, European Commission in and stop it. And others say, well, it will never happen because society will change. Well, nobody knows. Yeah? But we do have a new thing now, which is the, the PRISM scandal yeah? of the, the NSA in the United States. Yeah? We all know it. Agreements with big internet brands in the United States, looking at email, chat, videos, photos, analyzing everything, not only of Americans, but also across the globe, Europeans. And of course, governments are forced to make a statement. Uh, the president of Brazil said, okay, if Facebook and Google want to play here, they have to have the service in our country. European Commission is saying all kinds of things. This can't be the case. Eh? European uh, citizens have to be protected and can be subject of it. Eh? And it's not only that it's for legal reasons, because also in Europe, for a legal reason, a telco needs to keep data for either six or months or one year or two years it's actually that it's a business model yeah so the companies were paid to do it they just took it as a client um, which is a different thing now what we we did for just for fun yeah we we looked in uh, look for snowden in some social media and twitter facebook uh, blogs whatever and um, we, we were doing some project with a startup that has automatic natural language processing and can automatically classify things in positive and negative, yeah, if it creates. And the funny thing with Snowden is that uh, you can see his hero, and here you see traitor. Yeah? So he's a mix between uh, about half of the people think he's, uh, he's a hero uh, with all things associated with, and other things he is, he is a traitor. Yeah? It's also an example of, uh, actually there's a lot of value in looking at social media, because it's getting more and more, uh, uh, it's getting bigger and bigger, and actually getting value out of it, if you take the right tools, it's a piece of cake. Yeah? You, don't need, uh, you don't need to know a lot about it. Okay, <clears throat> giving this context, what can a business do in the big data space? Yeah? First, you can improve your own business. Yeah? In the digital world, Amazon, eBay, Netflix, all great at analyzing the data, how people use the services by identifying churn, doing retention offers, marketing campaigns, etc. Then, especially in the, in the telco, you have advertising. Yeah? Trying to compete with Google or Facebook, well, you all know everybody is in a telco. Patelgos said it for like uh, 10 years ago and nobody has done it yet. Yeah? Um, but that's using your data uh, to get a profile and to try to sell it uh, to advertisers just so they can get a higher click-through or more uh, personalized adverts. Then you have access to insights. Yeah? So that's the external monetization beyond advertising. Look at the data. Of course, you have to do some things with it, either get consent from the consent from the customers or you need to anonymize and aggregate. But once you do that, maybe you can transform other businesses. 
Yeah? An example, if you look at uh, mobile data of a mobile phone, location data, well, you can, as telco, you know where people are at what point of time. Maybe you can optimize the traffic, the traffic jams. Maybe you can optimize infrastructure planning. Maybe you can optimize or monitor migration between, uh, between countries and populations. Yeah? Um, and then the, the last part is what I call is the personal information economy. That is actually, well, why don't you um, recognize that personal data, privacy, is a problem, why don't we solve that problem? Yeah? And you turn it from a threat into an opportunity. Yeah? So I think this is, if you, if you look at also in this line, this is standard business. Yeah? Telcos, financial industry, have done it for 20 years. Uh, this is new business for 10 years. This is very new, one year, two years, even though there are some companies like Experian, Comscore, Nielsen, who have always been in that business, but for in a different way. Yeah? And then there is this business, it doesn't exist yet. Yeah? So this is, um, I need a place where I can put my data, I know it's safe, and then I decide what happens with my data. I can tell this, uh, this company who has my data, okay, you may combine it with other data, and then you may sell it, I don't know, to some brand, but I want to get the revenue share of it. Or you can, no, you can't use it, you can't sell it to any company, you only can sell it to public administration. And moreover, if you sell it to a company, I get 70% uh, of the revenues. And uh, if you sell it to the public administration, I want to have a re reduction on my tax, on my local taxes. Yeah? So those are things, look at this as a bank. Yeah? You put your data on the bank, it's your data, you control it, you take it whenever you want. You allow the bank to use it with other, other uh, money of other people. Uh, they invest, you get an interest. You can do the same thing with data. It doesn't exist yet. But I think it will happen. Uh, there are a few startups who are in that space who do things. And uh, as we said, um, two years ago, we, Telefonia, we couldn't tell anything about this. Yeah? Now we can. We have some experience. I, I think that in two years, we, we, uh, we, we've, we've been also very active in that space. <coughs> so I'm going to tell you two examples, experiences we have in optimizing internally and also externally. Okay, let's first in internally. Yeah? Um, so traditionally, what's happened in the, with data and companies is that there are a lot of different people looking at data and making conclusions and presenting that conclusions to management. Yeah? So you have the strategy department looking at all reports of, of Deloitte or Gartner, Forrester, IDC, whatever, come up with, look, this is the market, uh, this is the trend, uh, we can get so much of the, et cetera, and that goes for decisions. Yeah? You have marketing departments that look at social media, try to understand it, they take the information from the data warehouse and they try to come up with, inf uh, with marketing campaigns or understanding the market from their perspective and also that goes for decisions. Yeah? Then you have the, the, the KPIs, the reporting that tells you how is our business going. It's also going uh, for decisions. And then in the case of uh, telecommunications, you also have network data. Yeah? A lot of data is going through the network in order just to establish a phone call or whatever. You, you have a lot of data, which is usually used to optimize the network. Yeah? We know, uh, well, we have an outage there, so we should reroute. We always see that at 3 o'clock in the morning, there is a big uh, traffic jam in our network over there, so why don't we, etc. cetera. Yeah? Always going up, uh, taking, uh, leading to uh, decisions in isolation. Now, there is actually an easy, very easy opportunity, which is not technological. It's only about culture and about getting uh, insights uh, and understanding this, is that why don't you put all that same data, you drop it in one platform and you give one access, yeah? Of course, it's the same people who look at it, but at least you give them the opportunity. If I say something about my product in the market, uh, maybe how many customers I have, uh, how many customers are leaving, and I can check that with what Gartner is saying out of the box, don't have to do anything, don't have to ask anybody else, and I can also see uh, how they are generating traffic in my network uh, versus um, other things, then, well, I get a consolidated view on, on, on the information. You also take social media into account, so you see what your customers are doing, what your customers and other customers say, what the network is saying, and what the, what the analyst is saying. All together, eh? I think that's a very easy step to do from a project point of view, uh, from a cultural and organizational point of view, it seems to be 
uh, it is not easy yeah, because there's a lot of politics and power, uh, power play in, in, in the game. So I think <coughs> uh, my experience in, in, in doing this, uh, what does big data for organization? Yeah? First, you can go from multi-million upfront investments to you just to pay, as you pay as you grow. To start is very easy. Yeah? You just take some platform, Hadoop, whatever, uh, you put some people on it, some data scientists, and with three people, you can, you, you can start working. Rather than having a 20 million investment, uh, you have to work for two years, and then you start doing things. Yeah? Of course, you need to see, is there any legacy system in place? If there is, maybe you have to live with it. Otherwise, you can start from scratch, and you have to be very agile. Yeah? Not very long-term, uh, long processes. We used to focus on la large business cases, yeah? because you have a lot of investments, you only want to work on those cases where there is a direct payoff. Okay, if we reduce churn 1%, we save like 100 million a year. Okay, so everybody in this area works on churn reduction. There's a huge amount of other things that uh, people need, but it just doesn't get into the radar because it's too small. Yeah? So what you should do is to allow an exploratory self-serve environment where people with the right tools can find out whether there is a business case, yes or no. Eh? If it's not, just forget, don't bother these guys. But if there is, once you have some experience and some, some data, then you can actually make a large business case yeah? and then it can go up. So do it in a much more distributed way. Yeah? Related to the next point, uh, normally BI departments are huge, yeah? so a telco has about, I don't know, 200 or 300 plus, or maybe 500 plus people, all working on data warehouse, analytics, etc. cetera, uh, central, yeah? all organized. Of course, there's a lot of synergies, but the value, of, uh, the value of data is not so much in the data in itself. It's not in the analytics. It's in the analytics, the insights, com uh, combined with business insights. Yeah? You need to bring them together. Yeah? And for many of those organizations, they have what they call business partners. Yeah? So for the residential, or for the, for the, uh, for the uh, B2B, they have specific people understanding a bit. But why don't you leave it just distributed? Get the, have the people in the business teams, have them communicate and work together. Yeah? That's where uh, you much more distributed, your investment becomes much l less, uh, and, and uh, the results become uh, much better. The problem is, of course, one of skills and culture. Yeah? Skills, because it requires that also the business people have some capability, yeah? or you should provide them with the right tools. And also culture. Yeah? It's a cultural thing that usually, normally it's not done. And what we see also is that usually data is an afterthought. Yeah? You want to launch a product. Once the pro product is launched in the market, okay, you want to know, okay, how is the product doing? Yeah? Uh, how shall we measure it, uh, et cetera? And also through the life cycle of the product, in the beginning it's acquisition, then it becomes development, then it becomes retention. Well, it's all kind of different KPIs and metrics you want to know. Um, in large companies, usually that, that thinking only starts when the product is launched, and then it takes another year before, before they have the capability to know that. Yeah? What you should do is data by design. If you develop a product, if you, think ab I, uh, you conceptualize a product, think about the metrics in each stage and make sure that the data you need for those metrics is built in in the whole product development. Yeah? If you do it yourself, uh, make sure it's your team that knows about it. If you do it with a provider, make sure you put it in the contract. Yeah? That's the last point. Um, oftentimes, um, you, you find out, look, if we would have this data, then we could do this business case. Yeah? So you go to your uh, IT department or to your network department or to a provider and say, yeah, we can give you the data. It's just, it's just two million in six months. Yeah? Um, because, of course, uh, everybody understands there is value in the data, and if you haven't thought about it from the beginning, then maybe getting it out is hard. Yeah? So what we learned is that if you negotiate with the provider, always make sure that you put in the contract that you get free access to your data. Yeah? Uh, because in the end it's your data, and uh, I don't know, if it's technical, define a northbound interface that says, okay, this data is dumped every day or every month or whatever in a certain place and then you can access it. If you don't do that, uh, this takes a lot more time uh, to, to, to get uh, the right data. Yeah? But one of my big frustrations 
is even a simple thing like Telefonica Digital, yeah? a company with launching about 10 digital services. Frustration is to get the data. It's sort of the same reason. Yeah? People launch products. They don't want to think about data when they have not yet launched. And afterwards, you have to work very hard. You have to fight for a place in the roadmap, etc. OK, so this is about how do you improve with big data your internal organization. As you've seen, um, it's a lot about a mindset, about culture, and about organization. Yeah? OK, next step. How can we make money? How can we make a business case out of our data? As a telco provider, we have lots of information in our network. Um, this is about location data. Yeah? As, as a start, um, like uh, almost a year ago, Telefonica launched a business unit called Dynamic Insights, uh, which is a global business unit unit. And the first product is called Smart Steps, um, and it's for retailers. Yeah? It's about footfall. Um, so we, it's launched in, in the UK, and uh, things it does, so imagine uh, what we see in our network is where people go. Um, if you move from one cell to another uh, cell, uh, then we see a handover. If people make a call, uh, there is a location. So all these kind of things we can see. And if you think about retailers, about change, uh, franchising, whatever, so they have to decide, okay, where do I open a shop? Um, what is my target audience? Uh, which location should it be? Or in times of crisis, what is the shop which I could close yeah, without affecting uh, my business, etc.? Uh, how is the store performance versus footfall? There are a lot of things that, 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 um, that are valuable. And if you look at it, how they are doing it now, basically they're taking uh, data from, they're hiring a company and maybe put on the corner a person with a clicker who just counts how many people between six and eight are passing in front of the store. Yeah? So some of the questions retailers worry about, um, it's about uh, where should I target loyalty or acquisition marketing. Uh, this is uh, strategic decisions also to the more operational. Yeah? So um, in Dynamic Insights, we thought, OK, so let's see if there is a, is a business where we can transform the retail industry in terms of uh, uh, store management yeah? um, using our data. Yeah, so we bring in uh, mobile behavior data, yeah, and that is, uh, for the moment, especially location. Uh, GFK is coming in uh, because they are playing in this space uh, for many years. Yeah? So you also have to recognize that you can't do everything, and maybe yeah, we don't have uh, so much credibility in the retail sector as they have. And that creates together a product called Smart Steps. Yeah? And we have and this is O2 in the UK, lots of, uh, lots of data in the network, uh, hundreds of cells uh, where we can get uh, lots of uh, information. Yeah? But before, of course, you can't speak about this without speaking about privacy. Yeah? So we do a three-step process. Yeah? First, um, we get the data from the operators. Yeah? So before we get the data, we make sure it's anonymized. Yeah? We hash as every individual um, individual uh, number uh, <coughs> before we get it. Yeah? Then what we do is we aggregate. So we never speak about a person. It's always about crowds of people. Yeah? Um, and we, uh, we get to aggregate the hashed values into a groups of gender uh, or age. Yeah? And well, depending on how good you are in identifying those things, you, you can do it in more or less. Yeah? And we also, um, we never take small, uh, small aggregations. If it's an aggregation of two, we just uh, uh, invent some other ones. Yeah? Just to, to make it impossible to go back to the original uh, people, the, the, the de-identification. So this gives you uh, O2 customers, uh, cr crowds of O2 customers, across the company. And then what we do is, given our market share of OT, we extrapolate to a country, um, a country view yeah? uh, using uh, algorithms. So and this gives us values of groups uh, around the country, yeah? wherever it is. 
So it's impossible to go back to a, a certain person. Then what we do is that we plot this on an interface, a uh, map interface, in um, 200 by 200 uh, meters, which is basically the, uh, the precision you get with cell towers. Um, and then, for instance, what you see here in red is the top 10, and what you see in orange is the, the next 15 uh, the next 15 uh, percent. Yeah? And this shows you where people are at a certain time uh, of the day. So with this, you can do all kinds of things. Yeah, I just want to show here one example that you can do. But if you have this, uh, you can do many things as a retailer. Yeah? For instance, you can select the square, which is maybe where your shop is. And you can ask, OK, so what is the gender uh, division um, between uh, males and females? Yeah? And you see this blue is a specific location, and the gray is the national, uh, the national uh, average. You can also see whether people are working in that area, are, at, are living in that area, or are visiting that area. Yeah? Because, as a, of course, as a, as, a, as a retailer, you're mostly interested in the people who are visiting that area because that are potential, potential clients. And you can also see an age, yeah? an age a range of the, of the clients. Um, and then an hourly count. Yeah? So when are there more people in your shop? This helps you in deciding. Uh, well, uh, things about um, shops. Yeah. Another thing you can do is make a heat map. Yeah? So this is, this, this is the weeks of the day. Uh, this is the time of the day. And this is where it's red. More red, it means there are just more people at that day in that time. And usually, if you do this uh, next to the O2 or next to a stadium, then you definitely see very clearly uh, things going red when there's a big event. And especially if you look at football, it's basically males and only a few females. Yeah? But other things you can use is like catchment areas. Where do people come? If you go to, if you go to Ikea, when you, when you check out, they always ask, your postcode, uh, please? So that they use it as, where are you coming from, as a catchment area. And then uh, they use that for putting publicity in those areas. Now, with this, you directly see uh, if you want to open a shop or a, comp a competitor has opened a shop, you know where the catchment areas are. And you can see where you actually are competing. It's maybe not in your shop, but maybe it's in, in a different place. And uh, so this is all insights that um, are very new and um, not so new in the sense that such insights didn't exist. Yeah? But the difference is that it's uh, very frequent. Yeah? It's very, uh, so you can, you can do it on a daily basis if you want. Um, whereas previously you had to have clickers, you do it once a year. Uh, it's a, a huge amount of data. Uh, it covers the whole nation. It's every day of the year. Um, so it helps uh, eliminate the retailer's blind spots. So what's the profile of the people in your area? Uh, and this is also, you could combine it with your other data sources. Yeah? You could export it and then combine it to get, to get more value. Yeah? But this is just one example of uh, smart steps, what we start with. But you can imagine, you apply it to retailers, you can apply it to public administration, you can apply it to uh, healthcare, uh, and even this is outdoor location. Yeah? What if you combine it with Wi-Fi? Uh, then you also suddenly you have indoor. So it's, you can scale it up in many, many different things. And this is in the UK, yeah? so you can also go to, to, to other countries. OK, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.